Hello. In this video, I would like to briefly introduce you to the Digital Public Library of America, or DPLA, and its primary source sets for educators and students. My name is Samantha Gibson, and I am the Engagement and Use Coordinator at DPLA. First, what is DPLA? The Digital Public Library of America is a free national digital library that provides access to millions of materials from libraries, archives, and museums across the country. Currently, we have over 29 million items from 3,000 institutions. The logos on this slide represent how we bring together content from major national institutions like the National Archives and Smithsonian, alongside more local materials from institutions like public libraries, universities, museums, and historical societies of all sizes through our state-based partners. This slide uses the example of the Martha's Vineyard Museum and the Public Library of Brookline, whose collections come to DPLA through our Massachusetts partner, Digital Commonwealth. What you might be thinking is that sure, with thousands of partners and millions of items, our collections are incredibly broad, rich, and valuable for classroom use. But that's also a lot to search through to find what you're looking for. And we know that as educators, you are always pressed for time. That's why we created the primary source sets. From DPLA's homepage at dp.la, you can get to the primary source sets by clicking the project in the top menu or scrolling down to see selected sets highlighted on the homepage. Click Browse All Sets to go to the main project page, which brings you to a page that looks like this. So first, what are the sets? The primary source sets are 140 topic-based highlight reels. They're small collections of some of the best source material in a variety of formats from DPLA's collections, organized around commonly taught topics. The primary source sets are for secondary and higher education. We designed each set with middle school, high school, and early higher ed in mind. We envision that these resources are adaptable across grade levels and learning styles. The primary source sets are created and reviewed by a team of educators on our Education Advisory Committee. The teachers on our committee represent grade levels from middle school to higher education and disciplines including U.S. history, art history, English, and school librarianship. The sets are designed to be resources for both instructors and for students to use directly. Finally, the primary source sets represent interdisciplinary topics. There's a strong U.S. history collection, but it's not just a U.S. history project. We also have topics on world history, literature, arts, and science and technology. Now that you have a sense of what the sets are, let's look at how to find ones to use. Back on the main page for the sets, notice the filter options. Use subject to filter sets around course areas like U.S. history or literature, but also by thematic topic like labor history or African-American experiences. Use time period to narrow to a specific date range and use the sort filter to see topics in chronological order or by which topics are newest on the site. Here, I filtered the sets to look for US history topics from the Civil War and Reconstruction time period, and I've sorted them chronologically. Next, I'd like to walk you through an individual set in this case, one I curated on Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs, which appears at the bottom right on this slide. The main page of each set includes a topic overview, each of which is written with student readers in mind, 10 to 15 hand-selected sources, and a teaching guide. Next, let's take a closer look at a source page I chose the newspaper clipping at the right. This primary source is a runaway slave advertisement placed in a local newspaper by the same man who enslaved Harriet Jacobs. Here are some of the details to note about how this source and others in the project are presented. There's a custom written caption at the top providing brief context and situating this source in relation to the topic of the set. Then there's a full-size digitized item in a zoomable viewer or media player, depending on the source format. Below the viewer, sometimes you'll see an optional description for additional context as needed. On the right, we provide citation information and prompts for student analysis. 
The last major component of the sets is the teaching guide. On the teaching guide, you'll find a set of discussion questions referencing the sources in the set. For example, question two references the source we just looked at. It reads, Dr. Norcom's advertisement for Harriet's return in 1835 offered four times as much a reward as this ad for dairy. Given the details of Jacob's life as recounted in Incidents, why do you think Norcom valued her so highly? The phrase, ad for dairy, is a link that brings you back to the source page for that item. Each teaching guide also has at least one classroom activity and an expanded list of primary source analysis prompts and resources on the right. What you will not find here are scripted lesson plans or a prescribed way to use the set or its sources. The sets are designed to be adaptable and flexible resources to best meet the needs of different classrooms, grade levels, and learning styles. So what's next? Explore the primary source sets. Look for topics you teach, explore personal interests, and get to know the amazing materials our educators have selected from DPLA. We'd also love for you to stay in touch with us. We want to hear your questions and feedback, so email us at education at dp.la or find us on Twitter at dpla. You can also watch the other tutorial videos available on this page for great instruction ideas and searching strategies. And finally, spread the word. Tell your friends, colleagues, and students about our site. Thanks for watching.